Hello, good people. Eber here with Hardware Connects, and welcome to our grand finale or part three of our X299 build series brought to you by Intel. We wanted to say thanks to all of our partners who helped out in this build. It was a complicated one and we really appreciate all their help. Now, if you recall about a month ago, we put together an epic Skylake XPC featuring the Core i9-7980 Extreme Edition 18 core 36 threaded processor, along with some high-end components, including two GTX 1080 Ti's in SLI inside a micro ATX case. And while I did experience some challenges building the system, the end result was absolutely stunning. Uh, I mean, I can leave the build video or I'll link the build video right over here so you guys can check it out. Uh, but something to note here is that this is our very first Skylake XPC and we wanted to find out how uh, adaptable the platform was for our workflow, which primarily revolves around video production. But the one thing that we really wanted to focus was being able to get the best out of a high-end system like this. While overclocking could improve performance by a specific margin, provided you've considered cooling and power dry to the equation, that wasn't the case with our build. As you saw, we really didn't gain that much in terms of performance. So in this video, I'll be walking you through my experience uh, using Core Affinity within Windows 10 and how you could set parallel workloads at the same time. So basically by assigning a certain number of cores, and we'll get to that later. Uh, but at the same time, I also want to tackle overclocking just one more time, just to see if I could squeeze just a little bit of performance out of this 18 core processor. So without any further ado, let's get started. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. Finally, an ultra slim body keyboard with mechanical red or blue switches designed and perfected for work and play. The Tesoro Gram XS evolved to fit right in. Check it out below. All right, so one of the reasons why someone would want to invest in a processor featuring 14 or 16 or 18 cores in this case is primarily due to the sheer amount of horsepower it has when it comes to rendering tasks or multitasking. Remember, this is a $2,000 CPU with way too many cores for any program I want to take advantage of, so we're gonna try and optimize all of the threads uh, for our own workflow. For example, if I take this 12 minute, 35 second 4K timeline, export it to the YouTube 4K preset, this 18 core processor completes that task in 12 minutes and 10 seconds, which is almost a one to one ratio, and that's amazing. Now, when you compare this result to other processors featuring lower core counts, the render time is expected to increase, which makes sense. But there's also the multitasking aspect that's important uh, when it comes to taking full advantage of a CPU like this. Sometimes professionals don't have the luxury of time uh, to dedicate their system to just one use, uh, which in this case is rendering. You wanna be able to do multiple tasks at the same time while rendering the background without losing a lot on the performance side. This not only enhances productivity, but it eliminates uh, downtime as system render. And I think here's where Skylake X can come in really beneficial from a personal standpoint. As a content creator, I render videos on a weekly basis while working on thumbnails, as well as doing other tasks. In fact, we do have a possibility of streaming to Twitch while gaming. So we're really looking for the ultimate mega tasking processor here. And I think this is exactly where something like the i9 7980XC Extreme Edition uh, is a perfect fit. Enter Core Affinity. Having spent some time playing around with this feature, I absolutely love it. And it plays a large role in optimizing uh, for Skylake X. Now, typically if you were to render a video, but at the same time also work on 3D animation, or if you just wanna kick back and relax by playing a game or something, your Windows 10 Task Manager distributes those workloads evenly across all 36 threads, which could affect performance. This is the same case for any lower count CPUs. By default, the current version of Windows 10 does a pretty good job at thread scheduling in some situations, but Core Affinity takes things to the next level. Essentially, this allows the user to assign a certain number of threads to a particular application. So for example, I can schedule 20 threads uh, for Adobe Media Encoder, eight threads for Blender, and eight threads uh, for Doom or Battlefield 1. Uh, this completely eliminates the need for these applications to start fighting for system resources because if you set everything in auto and if you start running all these programs at the same time, they're gonna be fighting for uh, those threads. And uh, this completely eliminates that. You're basically taking control of which one's doing what, what, what are you assigning, or which one of these threads are you assigning to a certain application, and it's pretty cool. Executing this is pretty simple. All you have to do is open up the task manager, head over to details, find your desired application, right click on that task, then head over to set affinity and start assigning the threads. Now, one of the things to keep note of is that you need to have your application open up prior to setting core affinity. So for example, if I assign a certain number of threads to media encoder, uh, I need to have that particular application open up 
before even assigning core affinity because it doesn't show up uh, in the process list within task manager. Uh, same story goes for Blender or just any application in general that you desire or that you want to assign a certain number of threads. Uh, mind you that this is a temporary solution because as soon as you exit the application, everything goes back to default. So you need to sort of redo the whole process, uh, which could be a little frustrating. But there are third party programs like Process Lasso that allows the user to permanently assign threads. But that's something that we want to look into later. So to test out core affinity, I'll be running three applications at the same time. This starts with Adobe Media Encoder, Blender and Doom. I've created three use case scenarios just to compare and see how core affinity is efficient. So with case one, I'm going to set everything in auto. I'm going to let Windows Task Manager do its thing and uh, basically just assign the number of threads to those applications running at the same time. And with case two, I'm going to be setting 20 threads to um, Adobe Media Encoder, eight threads to Blender, and then eight threads for Doom. Our last case is splitting the number of threads evenly across all three applications. So I'll have 12 threads for Adobe Media Encoder, 12 threads for Blender, and finally 12 threads for Doom. So how do we do? Well, let's start with case one. Adobe Media Encoder took around 15 minutes to render the 4K video. Uh, Blender completed its render in three minutes and 29 seconds, while Doom was completely unplayable at one frames per second at 4K set to ultra settings. Remember, we're working with two GTX 1080 Ti's in SLI as well, but it seems like there was not enough CPU resources for the game to run. But as soon as Blender completed its render, I got an average of around 57.5 frames per second uh, on Doom, which is pretty interesting. Moving on to case two, where we assigned 20 threads for Adobe, eight for Blender, and eight for Doom. Uh, the 4K render took 17 minutes and 27 seconds to complete, while Blender uh, did its thing in 11 minutes and seven seconds, and Doom surprisingly did not stutter. We got around 65 frames per second on average, and it was uh, a welcoming uh, change. Our last case, splitting those threads evenly across all three applications. Uh, we see Media Encoder completing that task in 25 minutes, Blender completing its render in seven minutes and 18 seconds, and we get a slight boost in FPS uh, in Doom. So that makes sense because we did assign an additional four threads. So I think Core Affinity is an excellent feature to take advantage of, especially if you have a multi-core processor like the uh, 7980 Extreme Edition CPU. Uh, it's great. I mean, you can just being able to assign number of threads to a certain application is fantastic. It's actually a lot better than having Windows 10 uh, do its thing because, as you saw, we were barely able to play Battlefield 1 or just Doom in general. I, I mean, one FPS is... That's unplayable, you can't do anything. So imagine replacing that task with something like streaming or doing something else. I don't think you'll be able to do or get away with uh, something like that because we had Blender as well running in the background that just taxed out on the CPU. Uh, so there are different things to take into account. So this is where Core Affinity uh, is an excellent option. Now that we've taken a look at optimizing your CPU's performance, I should also discuss other options uh, that Intel X299 chipset brings to the table. Let's start with storage because it's a crucial element, especially when it comes to a workstation PC. X299 offers 44 PCI lanes with 40 being split towards dedicated graphics solutions and the remaining for NVMe or other other types of high bandwidth storage. Having multiple drives is key if you're working with large format files because it eliminates bottlenecks and with your drives working in parallel, that increases your efficiency. In my case, I configured the Optane 900p SSD as my primary boot drive for the operating system and applications like Premiere, After Effects, Photoshop, the important ones, you know. And I should emphasize that investing in an SSD makes a world of difference when it comes to boot times and application launch times. The M.2 NVMe SSD that I've installed on the motherboard is configured as a footage or ingest drive where I would offload my footage from the SD card to the drive and then use that to edit videos in Premiere. For my scratch disk, I've assigned one of those to Intel's uh, 545 series SATA based SSD. And lastly, for game library, I've assigned the other SATA SSD. So this should help uh, ease my workflow. Plus, it's another way of staying organized. Another thing that I need to mention is that while you're rendering a video within Media Encoder, the last few seconds, just right after it completes that video, I think that's where Media Encoder just sort of writes that file towards your drive. So having a fast drive uh, just for that test. So say, for example, if you have another dedicated drive just for exports, so if you're just basically just rendering it directly to that drive, um, it would come in beneficial. It would obviously reduce render times just a little bit, only if you're concerned about render times. If you're not, you could just use the footage uh, drive or the ingest drive uh, that I talked about earlier and then just keep it that way. There are different ways to configuring a workstation PC. In my case, 
this works really well. Another thing to keep in mind is that there are some applications that can fully take advantage of two or more GPUs alongside the CPU resources. And a good example of that is 3D rendering. The X299 chipset allows for high-speed GPU interface across multiple programs without sacrificing on bandwidth uh, when compared to their mainstream Z370 chipset. Take Octane Render, for example. I took a sample spaceship demo render scene and compared the results with a single GPU and combined. As you can see, the render times are cut by half after enabling the second graphics card. Now, realistically, I wouldn't recommend gaming GPUs for these tasks, uh, since there are workstation-based GPUs specifically geared towards uh, 3D GPU acceleration, but I just wanted to test out the true potential of these two 1080 Ti's. Okay, so let me explain what I'm doing right now. So I've disabled SLI on both GTX 1080 Ti's, and you can do that through NVIDIA's control panel, uh, regardless of if, if regardless if you have the SLI bridge or not. So you can go through the control panel and disable SLI. Uh, the other thing that I've done here is after, I've actually uh, set media encoder to uh, the first GTX 1080 Ti's, so, so one of them is dedicated directly towards uh, the media encoder, and I've set the second GPU uh, for Doom. So, you know, titles like Doom, uh, they fully take advantage of both SLI and single GPU solutions. So I've separated those tasks uh, within those two GPUs. And here are some interesting results. With the same core affinity applied, so 20 threads for Adobe Media Encoder, 8 threads for Blender, and 8 threads for Doom, the frame rate difference between both cases, so disabled SLI versus SLI, is quite frankly interesting. As you can see, I got around 84 frames per second compared to 65 frames per second by just disabling SLI and assigning that second GPU uh, towards Doom. And I think I might have an explanation here, but I'm not sure if it's the right conclusion. So correct me if I'm wrong in the comments down below. So here's what I think. I think when you enable SLI, programs like Adobe Media Encoder, Doom, and other applications, they try to spread their workload across two graphics cards. Um, and in this case, Premiere really doesn't, or Media Encoder doesn't really make any sense because uh, we've seen through numerous tests that having a dual GPU solution just for rendering videos is absolutely pointless. When Doom is running in the background, just as Adobe Media Encoder and Blender, I think there's a little bit of confusion with those two graphics cards uh, because when Premiere splits its workload across two GPUs, uh, then you know, Doom might have a little bit of a confusion as to which GPUs it should uh, potentially take advantage of. So that's kind of what's going on here. That's what I think that's um, causing, you know, the FPS drop when you disable or when you enable SLI. Uh, but disabling SLI completely fixes, it solves the problem. And the results are, as you saw, are really interesting. We got, you know, 84 frames per second on average at 4K set to ultra settings while we were uh, rendering a Premiere. And again, rendering results haven't affected whatsoever. Uh, which is again very interesting, but it totally makes sense because um, you know SLI or non-SLI, you're really not going to notice a significant difference with a high-end GPU like a GTX 1080 Ti. And the last thing that I want to discuss here is overclocking because I did want to squeeze a little bit of performance out of the 18-core processor, but unfortunately I wasn't able to. I spent countless hours playing around with the ring ratio, core voltage, ring voltage, SA voltage, and IO voltage and I was unsuccessful getting the CPU above 3.5 gigahertz on all cores. It seems like MSI decided to use middle-of-the-road MOSFETs on this X299M Gaming Pro motherboard, and the lack of proper VRM cooling all added to the equation. Uh, in fact, when I ran the stress test, uh, I did notice VRM temperatures going as far as 110 degrees Celsius, uh, which then resulted in CPU throttling, so all cores were running at 2.6 gigahertz, which is, again, really unfortunate. Remember, I'm trying to overclock an 18-core processor and a micro ATX motherboard, so the limitations are pretty expected, and it seems like MSI has purposely limited overclocking on this particular chip, uh, but it might not be the case for the lower uh, threat count CPUs that Intel offers, so for example, the 7900X or the uh, 7960X. And that's a wrap for this X299 series. It was definitely worth the while. It all started with me exploring the platform and then going through my process, just building together our first a Skylake XPC. Although we did face some challenges, I think the end result was absolutely beautiful. And of course, in this video, we talked through core affinity and of course, taking you through different uh, configurations where you can assign the number of threads, which is actually a great feature if you are uh, if you want to take advantage or if you want to optimize a multi-core CPU like the Core i9-7980 Extreme Edition processor. The other thing is that, you know, configuring your storage uh, in a certain way, especially if you're a video editor, is crucial. So, you know, having one as an ingest, having a certain drive 
uh, for ingest and the other one for exports, another one for scratch disk is important. It will definitely help your workflow. It will help ease your workflow. That's the term uh, that I want to emphasize on. Finally, we want to take this time to thank our viewers for watching this series. And of course, let us know in the comments down below if there are any other ways to evolve this build. And of course, your suggestions for robust motherboards that I could use my personal workstation PC would be fantastic. I'm, I'll gladly uh, take a look at those as well. And if you're interested in learning more about the Core i9 processor and the rest of the components, check the links in the description down below. I'm Ibar with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.